morning. Praise the Lord. Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask us to, uh, we just heard this incredible scripture that we're going to be digging into and meditating on uh, for this series and then several weeks uh, to come. But uh, I want to ask you to stand up on your feet, if you don't mind, and uh, we're going to pray together and honor God's word. And you have a card there on your seat. I'm going to ask you to, to grab that, and uh, the scripture will be on the screen as well. Uh, we're going to we're going to memorize this word together. I'm so excited about uh, this series that we're in. And, you know, the last couple of summers, we've done this intentionally as a church body together. And that is that we are all chewing on the same thing, if you will. And all of our age groups and our students, our young adults, our kids ministry, we're all focused on Psalm 23 for this summer. And so we're excited about that. I'm praying, and part of my prayer has been preparing for this series, is that this series and this scripture, Scripture is not familiar any longer, but that it has a fresh revelation attached to it that God wants to speak into our lives with relevance and purpose and transformational power. And so I'm praying, and I want to do that right on the front side of this series today as we read this scripture out loud together as a church. And if you're watching uh, through technology today, then you can tune in online. The words will be on the screen. And let's recite this scripture together and then we'll end it with prayer are you ready I said are you ready come on you got your preacher voice on all right you ready one two three the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Come on, give the Lord praise. Amen. God, we just, we come before you this morning. We stand to our feet to honor this sacred scripture that was penned thousands of years ago by the man that you called the man after your own heart. May we be people today, at the beginning of this summer series, may we be people who are chasing after your heart. So Lord, I thank you for a fresh hunger today. Lord, for every person in this room, across this campus, those that are watching in our online campus today, God, I thank you and I speak that there would be a fresh hunger in their spirit to know you deeper to know you as David knew you. And Lord, we know that we're under the new covenant, so we know that that there's nothing hindering us from knowing you intimately in a deeper way. So Lord, I pray over this, this sacred psalm that it would speak into our life in a fresh way in the coming days and in the coming minutes, Lord, today in this sermon. God, we pray that your word would be life-giving. We know that it is. We know that it is truth. And we know that it is a lamp into our feet a light into our path. And so, Lord, we we do what we've sang here today. We surrender to you. Let this be a moment, Lord, that we look at. Lord, we we allow you to invade our life. Lord, if there's there's closet places of our life, Lord, that we've been hanging on to or maybe that we, we haven't made vulnerable toward you, Lord, I pray that that would happen here today. And, Lord, I pray that if there is someone here today And they need to drive a spiritual stake of faith in the ground this morning for something to shift in their life. And they've surrendered in a fresh way to you for you to do a new work in them. Lord, I pray that there would be a courage and boldness to step forward this morning and publicly declare in baptism that you are everything that they need to live the abundant life. And we just invite you to do that today. We give you room as we have sang this morning we ask that you would have your way speak to us we pray in Jesus name and everybody shouted together amen and amen you can be seated thank you today as we kick off this series uh, and I was here last Sunday but I know it was a holiday weekend so I just uh, just wanted to take a 
a moment uh, to greet you if I haven't seen you uh, recently in the last several months as we have been on a, uh, a season of rest and sabbatical, Tiffany and I and our family, and I uh, just want to say thank you to you. And uh, it's, been, it's been productive. I feel like I told someone after the first service, I can honestly say I feel like I have received everything that I felt like the Lord wanted uh, me to receive and Tiffany. And so uh, that's, I, I say that to you because I know many of you have been praying for us and, and I just wanted to say thank you for that. It's been a great time and uh, we, are, we are back, amen, and we're, we're ready to lead. Uh, ready to do life, ready to do church, and uh, to walk with you on, on a spiritual journey. And so it's going to be a great summer. Can you say amen? amen? And so we're looking forward to great things that the Lord has in store. My Shepherd, you know, this series, several months ago, we kind of planned uh, this, and uh, I love this psalm. It is definitely one of the, the most popular passages in all of scripture if you think about it and even in secular culture uh, many many people know this passage it's very popular familiar and and as I said a few minutes ago my prayer for us during this time is that it it's not just familiar any longer but that it it has a, a depth and I'm praying that it develops a root system uh, in this season for us to know God the way David understood and, and knew God. And so I'm praying that, that God's going to reveal some things to you as we journey through this passage, these six verses that are so rich and so profound and so intimate that you would know this incredible God that David describes in this passage. And so I, I really feel that to know God the way David describes him in these verses You've got to have a true understanding of the first five verses of this great psalm. And it is, the Lord is my shepherd. Come on, would you say it with me? The Lord is my shepherd. One more time. The Lord is my shepherd. I, I've often taught you, and occasionally I mention it, uh, that we need consistent breath prayers in our life. A breath prayer is a statement of prayerfulness that you can say in one breath. And the Lord is my shepherd, guess what, is a prayer, it's a breath prayer statement that you can say. The Lord is my shepherd right? I, and then we'll talk next week about not, we don't need to be in need. We don't need to be in want because we have everything that we need. But today, I want to focus on those five words. The Lord is my shepherd. Now, in this passage, uh, you, you'll see, and it's even on the, the screen there, that David describes a characteristic and a part of God's nature that is really critical for us to understand. You know, throughout the Bible, God has names that are used to describe a characteristic or a nature of who he is. We've done studies as, as a church over the names of God and about understanding who God is. And, and it's really critical and important because they're revealed in Scripture so that we, we have a, a valid and true understanding of the relevancy of who God is over our life. And, and one of the names of God that is used throughout the Bible, but certainly in this passage that David uses, is Jehovah Rohi. Everybody say Jehovah Rohi. And, uh, you, know, you know, I guess from the south we could say Jehovah Rohi. But it's pronounced Jehovah Rohi uh, in the Hebrew language. Now, this is a compound name of God that's revealed. Often we see the name of God uh, Jehovah Jireh, right? We'll talk about that in some of these weeks ahead. Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. Uh, Jehovah M. Kadesh, the God that is there, the God that is present all the time and and again there's these names of God and this is one of those compound names of God that is revealed in scripture now let me give you a little bit of a a lesson here when you're reading your Bible and whenever you see the the word Lord in capital letters okay as you see in this passage that we just read Lord is listed in capital letters capital L capital O capital R and capital D now, the, the Old Testament name of God in Hebrew uh, is, is where we get the word Yahweh, Yahweh. 
And this name was so sacred as God revealed his name that the, uh, the, the, the scribes and people that wrote, they were so concerned about using the Lord's name the wrong way and even saying it the wrong way that they removed any vowels from the name so that you couldn't even necessarily say it. And so in the old Hebrew text, the word uh, Yahweh would have been spelled uh, in English, we would have spelled it Y. H W H. They removed the vowels out of the word. So that it really couldn't be pronounced, so that no one could really misrepresent and misuse God's name. And then over over centuries and years, they they included vowels in it that would have come out of the name Adonai of Lord, and they included vowels in there to the, create the word Yahweh. Which by by the way, I believe that every time you breathe, you are literally saying because we have the breath of the almighty El Elyon the most high God within us right that he's breathed life into us and on this day of Pentecost we can be reminded again that God has filled and breathed a mighty wind into his people that we have the wind of the spirit and the infilling power of the spirit in our life come on say a great amen right there and so, you know, and then in English, this word is then translated into Jehovah, Jehovah. And, and Jehovah, it, it means the God who is, right? That we can know that God has been, God is, and God will be. It means that God is ready to save. It means that God is ready to heal, to provide. It means that he is the righteous one. He is the holy one. He is worthy. He is just. He is true. He is big. He is supernatural. He's omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. These characteristics of Jehovah. And then these other characteristics are added to that name to make it a compound name. Rohi means shepherd. So the Lord God, my shepherd. And that's what we focus on. So as David says, the Lord is my Jehovah Rohi. And again, whenever you see the Lord in all capital letters, it is the word Jehovah declaring who God is in the moment. So I, I wanted you to have a level of understanding there. Rohi comes from a Hebrew uh, word, and the root meaning of the word is to feed. It means to feed D directly and in general. That's God's desire for us, and we'll talk more specifically about that role. But ultimately, God wants you to be fed. And God wants you to know that part of his uh, nature is to make sure that you are cared for, you're provided for, you're protected, and that you have good food to eat. Come on, somebody. Amen. And most importantly, in this context, spiritual food. Too many people are walking around today as believers that are anorexic spiritually. And they have no real sustenance. And, and we, you know, we, we, we get just enough. Maybe it's on a Sunday morning or maybe it's listening to a podcast or maybe it's uh, watching uh, someone who's preaching the word and occasionally we read the word and, and we just get a little bottle, if you will. We get a little mi milk, if you will. But God wants us to have solid food. He wants us to have spiritual steak where we can grow spiritual muscles that he can use in the kingdom for his glory and his honor. Come on, turn to somebody and say, it's time to grow up. And the, the shepherd that David describes is the one that leads us beside still waters. He takes us into green pastures so that we can be fed, we can be nourished, so that we are walking. When we walk through the valley, guess what? We're walking because we are strong in the Lord in his mighty power. We're not stuck in the valley. We're not stuck in the fire. We're moving forward because he is with me. His rod and his staff are comforting me, guiding me, caring for me. For me and I can know that even when the enemy is staring me down face to face he prepares a spread in his table before me for me to feast on who he is in the time of trouble so as we look throughout this we've got to know that that God wants us to be fed he wants us to be well taken care of that that we serve a God that feeds his flock he feeds his flock and the image of God caring for us is like a loving shepherd caring for his sheep. It's one of the most familiar and, and uh, I think, comforting ways to see God, that he is a good shepherd. And throughout this series, we'll describe what that looks like and some of, of what the role of a shepherd is and how important that is, that this is the, 
This is the spiritual metaphor that God uses to describe his nature toward his flock and toward his sheep. So if you're taking notes this morning, I hope you'll write some things down, right? Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm writing it for you. Yeah. Here's number one. You need to know today that you are in need of a shepherd. I need a shepherd. You, you got you to settle that on the front side of, of, of this uh, uh, going into this passage and as we, we pull back the layers on it throughout these weeks, you, you got to get this context today that you are in desperate, desperate need of a shepherd. I need a shepherd. You need a shepherd in your life. And this is important because uh, so many times uh, throughout life, we, we try to keep things under our control. We try to keep things uh, in, in a way that, that, that we're confident in ourselves. And what happens is pride begins to enter in. And watch this. We try to be our own shepherd. I've done it. You've done it. We all have these seasons of life where we're, we're trying to, to figure things out. We're trying to be in control of things. And, and it's good news today. You need to know that you're not called to be your own shepherd. And, and, and when we do, we need to catch ourselves from that and know that God has provided for us in his nature being our shepherd, our caregiver, the one that is looking after us. You need a shepherd. You need a shepherd. And watch this. Humility is always the entrance point to encountering the goodness of God and ultimately encountering the provision and the covering that Jesus brings in our life. Humility. Are you, are you humble today before the shepherd? Can, can you specifically say today, man, I, I need a shepherd. I'm not a shepherd. I'm not a shepherd. We say, well, you're a shepherd. No, I'm, I'm not a shepherd. I'm a sheep. I, actually, I, I happen to have a spiritual gift that is shepherding. God's called me to shepherd and help uh, shepherd the flock of this local church. It's an honor. It's a pri privilege. But at the end of the day, I'm a shepherd. Just like, I'm a sheep just like you are. I am. Come on, turn to, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a sheep, not a shepherd. Come on, tell them, bye. Yeah. We'll need to have uh, tongues and interpretation here in a few minutes. You're a sheep. I'm a sheep. And, and that's important for us to know and understand because out of that comes this humility that, that becomes the entry point into experiencing the provision and the covering that Jesus brings into our life. Listen to what uh, these scriptures say. And again, all throughout the New Testament and the Old Testament, we find uh, this reference to shepherding and the sheep and being in the flock. In Matthew, here in this passage, this is Jesus uh, being described here. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, Matthew records, because they were harassed and helpless Say it with me, like sheep without a shepherd. So we see that Jesus, right, he, he, he sees that these people, they don't have what they need. And, and, and I can provide that. And that's who he, is, who he is. And that's his nature of who he is. He doesn't want us to be sheep who are lost and astray. He wants us to be under his guidance, under his care, under his provision, under his covering. And then Isaiah, we see, uh, again, another description talking prophetically about Jesus. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead the, those that are with young. And then finally, another verse in Isaiah here. I'll set this up for you. This is the, the popular passage that many of us hear, especially around Easter time or, or around communion as we had communion together last week as a church family, and uh, he was bruised for our transgressions, right? By the stripes upon his back, right? We are healed, the Bible says. And then it quotes this passage. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord, there's those capital letters again, has laid on him the iniquity of us all. We've all gone astray, 
but he is our shepherd. Amen? Everybody say, I need a shepherd. You, you got to settle that on the front side of knowing this and, and understanding this. I am not my own shepherd. And God, forgive me for the times that I try to be my own shepherd and I try to direct my own life and I try to care for myself and take care of things because of so many things that are going on around me. But we need to understand sheep a little better. We need to know sheep a little bit better. I got, I got some, some images here. You can bring those up. Oh, isn't, isn't he cute? I don't know if it's a he or a she, but we'll, I'm not going to call it an it because it's either a male or female. So I'm a... It, it's good. There you go. Come on, that's somebody in here. That's somebody. That's somebody. That's the sheep that had gone astray right there. That's him. And he got clocked over the head. No, I'm kidding. That's another sermon. We'll get into that. Sheep are intended to be in a flock. They're intended uh, to be gathered. They're intended to be under the care. They're not just sent out on their own. Uh, they're intended to be part of community. That's important. Uh, some people would say that sheep are dumb. But, but actually... Sheep are very intelligent animals. I had someone after the first service come and say, Pastor, uh, I, I know a lot about sheep. And sheep are actually very intelligent animals uh, to the point that they've, they've been studied and they can find, they, they understand patterns, they understand routines, uh, they're very social, uh, they, they live well in community. Uh, they live well, even with other animals, for that matter. They're, uh, but they're, they're gentle. We know that. And again, very community-driven. And they take guidance from authority very well. L let me tell you this. Let me just let me remind you. God created you. And God created you to be under his care, under his authority, and because of sin and because of pride and because of lust and because of the flesh, man fell and pulled out from that covering in the Garden of Eden. But God pre-wired you, as I said to you last week, in your core, the heart of who you are. God wired you for connection and communion with who he is. You're created for that. Don't ever let the enemy convince you that you cannot connect to God. And the good news of the gospel is that God provided everything that you and I need through Jesus being the Lamb of God so that now we could be born again to be a part of his flock for all eternity. Man, that's good news. That Jesus lowered himself down from the throne of heaven, the word becoming flesh, to become the paschal Lamb of God so that we could be his lambs. We could be the sheep of his pasture. What a cool thought. But watch this. Sheep are dumb when they try to do it their own way. And watch this. When they are walking in fear. A sheep loses all of its intelligence when it gets frightened. And I'm here to tell us today as the people of God, as children of the Most High God, in a world that's brewing with a spirit of fear and chaos and confusion and what if this happens and what if the stock market crashes and, and, and what if gas ends up going to $8 a gallon? Well, what if it does? What if it does? The Lord is my shepherd. Not the government of the United States, not the Supreme Court, not the Congress, not the Senate, not the New York Stock Exchange. No, the Lord is my shepherd. And so it, it settles so much for us. But sheep lose all their senses when they become frightened. And we're the same way. We lose it. And then we begin to follow. A sheep will follow anything when it's frightened. 
and it goes off the deep end. Come on. Let's don't go off the deep end. Let's hang on to our senses. And part of what a sheep does is it tunes in to the voice of authority around them. God is our authority. Amen. He is our shepherd. He's the one that protects, guides, and cares for us. Let us be taking our cues, not from what's going on in this world today, but taking our cues from God. Amen. Amen. Be settled in that in your spirit and in your heart. You see, sheep really, though, when you look, uh, they're helpless animals, right? They're, they're actually fairly intelligent until they become frightened, uh, but they're, they're helpless. They really can't defend themselves. And that's good for us to know, to identify ourselves with, with sheep because they can't, they can't take care of themselves ultimately and they can't defend themselves. So that's why you and I, we need a shepherd. We're in desperate need of a shepherd you know, we think about the, the characteristics of a sheep, though, and, you know, there is one other animal that we're compared with in Scripture, but not as much as sheep, and that's an eagle. That's a, come on, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. To soar, mount up his wings like eagles, the Bible says, run and not grow weary, walk and not faint, right? Eagles are, are powerful animals, so that, but, but we're not referred to a lot as eagles in Scripture, but there are, we are. Come on, somebody say war eagle. I got you, I got you. <laughs> yep. Uh, but we're compared to sheep, you know. I mean, this animal that's just helpless. And, and, and we know that the enemy is compared to a lion, right? Prowling around, seeking whom he may devour. You don't, you don't hear a, you know, can you imagine a, a, an SEC school mascot being named? A, I mean, can you imagine the, the Georgia, instead of the Georgia Bulldogs, it's the Georgia Lambs? Right? Although they play like it every now and again. Come on, it's June. I can start it right now. <sighs> yeah. I know this year, they, yeah, look, banner year, yeah. Whatever, but all the other years. <laughs> Can you imagine the, the Alabama Crimson Lambs? Yes. No, you, when you think of a mascot, yeah, you can. Amen. Amen. War Eagle. Can you, can you imagine? I mean, mo no, most school mascots, right? It's the, it's the Tigers, right? It's the Gators. The Gamecocks, that's kind of pathetic. But, uh, uh, you know, the... The Bearcats, the Wolverines, you know, this animal that's got some fear. But, but not sheep. Why? Because they have no ability to defend themselves. They have no uh, uh, offensive side, right? They can't, and they can't take care of themselves. And they certainly can't defend themselves. But a shepherd protects the sheep. And that's why, and I'll talk about this more in this series as we go through it. Sheep are intended to be in a flock. You need to be a part of a church community. I know you're here today, and I, I honor that. You need to be invested in a church community. Iron sharpens iron. You are built and made to be in a flock and in spiritual community. It's critical. It's critical. But for two reasons. It will help you grow, as well as it will also help you be used by the Lord in, in the way that he created. Right? We need to be invested together. But watch this. Sheep can't protect themselves. And your proximity to the shepherd is what will give you strength. Your proximity to the shepherd is what gives you strength. We got to stay close. We are in need of a shepherd, and so we must stick close to the shepherd. We need a shepherd. And your proximity to the good shepherd will determine your level of courage, boldness, and strength in your life. Stay close. Stay in the flock. Stay assimilated to the body of Christ and stay in sound of his voice. We are sheep and we need a good shepherd. Number two is this. I need a good shepherd and, and I need to make him personal. I need to make him personal in my life. This is today why this is so important that you grab this this morning I, I need a good shepherd and I need to make him 
personal in my life. Jesus came so that you could have a personal relationship with the Almighty God. Personal. It's personal. It's not religious. It's not through a pastor. It's not through a priest. Now you can go boldly before the throne of grace in your time of need. That you can go because he is my good shepherd, David says. Get that word. That word's powerful in this. He declares who God is and then he declares that he is mine. Another powerful breath prayer that you can pray in your life is, I am yours. You are mine. Come on, would you hold your hands out and say that? I am yours. You are mine. And that's a great breath prayer to pray in your life day in and day out, maybe even throughout a given day. Lord, I belong to you. And you are my good shepherd. You belong to me. That personal possessive pronoun there, the word my, is so powerful. Because it's one thing for me to say that he is your good shepherd, but it's a whole nother ball game when you say, the Lord is my shepherd. And when David makes the statement of these five words that we meditate on here today, the Lord is my shepherd. He leads me beside still waters. He provides everything that I need. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, right? When you can make the Lord is my shepherd personal you will have access to everything else that God is make him personal today he's mine I belong to him I am the sheep of his pasture it's through Christ Jesus that you have access to all that God is the Lord is mine he brings it into the present David says right now he hasn't just been my shepherd he is my shepherd and I declare today that he will be my shepherd in the world and in the life to come when you choose to make the Lord personal watch this he will begin to reveal himself personally and more intimately in your life if I was to ask you today and I guess I, I will not a trick question this morning. How many of you want to know God deeper? You want to know him deeper? Maybe, maybe, maybe you've had experiences with the Lord in your past. Maybe you've had some of those just incredible seasons of spiritual growth. And, but can I tell you, God wants to continue to reveal himself to you in your life. He wants you, and it comes through personal connection with him. And you have full access to who God is, to know him intimately in your life. And as you make the Lord personal, not just one time, not just in, a, in an hour of need, although there's nothing wrong with that, but when you go to God and you hunger to know him deeper, the Bible says that when you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. He comes even closer. He honors that faith in our life, and he says, I, I'm just going to scoot up even closer to you. <laughs> God wants to be close to you. And that's why he sent his son, so that it is personal. He is my personal Savior. He is my personal Lord. He is my personal shepherd. What a powerful thought to claim and then he reveals himself to you even in a greater way that's really what Pentecost is all about and you think about it think about it Jesus says go and wait Pentecost would have been a, a date on the Jewish calendar representing harvest it's the next spiritual date on the Jewish calendar after Passover and Jesus says, go and wait. And they wait, they pray, and they're unified in the Spirit. And on the day of Pentecost, God pours out his Spirit on those 120 believers gathered together. He fills them with his Spirit. This is, this is critical. He fills them with his Spirit, not just so that they can speak in tongues. 
I believe in speaking in tongues. If you're new around here, I mean, I believe that. I believe in the purpose of it personally in my own life, that it edifies my spirit man to help me walk in the spirit. But that's not the only reason the Holy Spirit's poured out. The purpose of the spirit being poured out on the day of Pentecost was to empower believers so that they could live as children of the most high God in God's purposes and to be a witness. That's the purpose, to be a witness. To live as a witness, reflecting Christ in this world. You cannot be a reflection of Christ the way he's called you to be without the help of the Holy Spirit and the nature of who God is. Which means, you know, one of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit is that he is the spirit of truth. That he is the voice of truth. So watch this, as, as sheep that are connected to the shepherd... We need to know that God has given us the Holy Spirit to have understanding and that we are connected to the language and the spirit of truth. You know, I got something today that... This is a... This is a turkey call. Actually, a guy in the church made this for me about a year ago. I'm not a big turkey hunter, but I like to, and I haven't, I didn't turkey hunt this year because I was on sabbatical and doing better things. But, but when you go in the woods and you, you turkey hunt, you're trying to mimic the call, the sound, or the language of a turkey. So I'll see if I can kind of annoying isn't it <laughs> and in nature you know when you turkey hunt you're actually trying to reverse nature so I, I, I'm trying you know to act uh, I'm trying to act like a hen like a female turkey so that the male will gobble and and ultimately you're trying to get the male turkey to come to the hens but th- that that's not how it works uh, in in nature the uh, the hens will make a noise and the, the gobbler, the, the turkey, the top, he'll, he'll call and he'll get the hens to come to him. And so you're trying to reverse that in nature. But in order to do that, you've got you to gotta speak the language of the turkey. By the way, food for thought, did you know it's illegal to hunt turkeys from trees? And the reason is, is because turkey... They don't look up. They don't look up. And so it's not fair, fair hunting. And so don't be a turkey. We're called to look up. Where does my help come from? As I look to the hills, it comes from the Lord, right? Come on. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't be a turkey. Be a sheep. <laughs> be a sheep. <clears throat> so one of the key aspects of being a sheep is knowing his voice it's knowing knowing his voice and God has given to us the Holy Spirit so that we can know the voice of the good shepherd you see the role of the Holy Spirit is always to point you to Jesus and Jesus's role is always to point you to the father and then it becomes this link and this dance that happens over and over and over the Holy Spirit mimics the voice of Jesus the word becoming flesh and then Jesus points us to the father it just becomes this dance if you will as many theologians historically have called it the Trinity just pointing to each other constantly but listen to what Jesus said in John 10 you you know this passage you're familiar with it you would have heard these words at some point and I don't we won't read the whole chapter but I I grabbed a few of these verses listen to what he says but he who enters the door is the shepherd of the sheep to him the gatekeeper opens the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out when he has brought out all of his own he goes before them and the sheep follow him say it with me 
for they know his voice. Keep going. Listen to what he says here. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. We know this verse. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And then in verse 14, he says again, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Come on, he wants you to know him. He knows you. He wants you to know his voice. Amen. It's time for us to know him more intimately. And the way we do that is to make it personal. Make the shepherd personal today in your life. When you make him personal, you'll realize that he is my Lord. He is my protector. He's my guide. He's my strength. He's my shield. He's my source. He's my provision. He's my guide. He's my defender. He's my redeemer. He's my warrior. He's my comfort. He's my strong tower, my victory. He is my good shepherd. Make him personal. You need a shepherd. Make him personal today. And finally, number three is this. I need to put my full trust in who he is as the good shepherd. I need to put my full trust. In the nature of who he is as Jehovah Rohi. Can I ask you today, do you trust him fully? Do you trust him fully? This should be an ongoing question that we take inventory of in our lives because as life happens and and things occur it always takes us to this question to answer do I do I really trust him do I fully trust him do I trust him with this anxious thought do I trust him with this worry do I trust him with this, uh, with this heartache? Do I trust him with uh, this sickness? Do I trust him with my child that's not living and surrendered for the Lord? Do I trust him? And that, that's, a, that's a deep question to answer. But we need to ask it. Because it's in that, that if we fully trust the Lord, we'll, again, see him do incredible things in our life. And, and here's the deal. Trust always starts and requires surrender. Always. If you want to grow spiritually, surrender. If you want God to reveal himself in greater ways in your life, surrender. And it will take you into a place of trust. You know, it's not always, it's not always sin that holds us back. It's our ability to not trust as sheep that holds us back but the more you trust in the Lord the greater your faith will increase and the Bible says it's your faith that pleases God and makes him smile I want God to smile over my life amen and as I trust him greater faith rises in my heart And that faith then begins to be energized by hope and expectation and who God is and what God will do because he is my provision. He is my caregiver. He is my protector. He is my guide. He is my comfort. He is my peace. And everything good that God is in my life flows out of trusting in who he is. That he's going to take care of me. Here's that last thought there. You cannot experience the fullness of who the Lord is until you fully put your trust in who he is. And again, this becomes a a daily uh, thing that we've got to put into practice in our life, a daily discipline of saying, you know, God, I, I I can't do this, but you can. This is not mine, it's yours. You know, I, well, I, I trust him at times. You know, I, I trust him 10%. I call that my trust tithe. No. No. To trust God 90% is to be in disobedience. Do you trust him wholeheartedly? Do you trust him in full? Do you trust him where you don't? Because when you fully trust him, you will not get captured by worries of this world. 
and the anxieties of this world. Listen to what Psalm says, a couple of passages here that I'll, I'll close with. Again, there's those capital letters declaring Yahweh, Jehovah. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts and with my song I give thanks to him. And then finally, Psalm 20. Come on. Come on. Come on, let's say it together. You ready? One, two, three. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Come on, some trust in their paycheck. Some trust in doctors. Nothing wrong with it. Some trust in the New York Stock Exchange. Some trust in world governments. Some trust in the CDC. But we choose to trust in the name of the Lord. Where's your trust today? Amen. What's your house built on? Amen. As we sang earlier, when the, when the rains come and the wind begins to blow and life happens in this crazy world that we live in, it will reveal what you trust in. And if your trust is not built on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ as your good shepherd, you will find full, instead of full revealing of who God is, you'll find full disappointment, my friend. I need a shepherd. I need to make him personal. He's my good shepherd. And I need to put my full trust in who he is. And out of that flows, again, we'll unpack this week to week, flows this journey that David describes that he goes on. Still waters, green pastures, the valley of the shadow of death. But as a sheep, he declares, but I will fear no evil. Because you're with me. You're Jehovah Shema, the God that's present, always with you. You're never alone when you're with the Good Shepherd. And I, I end with this this morning before we pray. The last installment of this series will be verse 6. But I want to I want to end the first installment of this series with the last message that I'll preach of this series. Surely, David says. David's got a blessed assurance. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Now watch this. David starts saying, the Lord is my shepherd. The, Lord, the shepherd leads, the shepherd guides, the shepherd is out in front of me. He's the one that's, that I'm, I'm following the good shepherd. But God is so good as the good shepherd that David says, he's not just out in front of me. He is surrounding me. And the wake of who he is in nature, he's so good and his mercy is so great and new every morning to my life that he is behind me, pushing me forward into his plans and purposes for my life. Come on, I can't wait to preach that. That when I'm following after him and I'm, I'm moving toward his voice and I'm moving toward his heartbeat and, and what he's called me to do and I'm walking in his favor and I'm walking in his wisdom and he, I'm allowing him to nurture the good things that he desires to do and I stay surrendered to him. He says his goodness and his mercy will come behind me and it will keep me moving forward into what he's called me to do. Awake, in boating terms, is, is something that a boat produces in, in physics, if you will, of motion. Awake then comes and, and pushes behind a vessel. David says, there, there's something behind me that God's created that pushes me forward. Yesterday I had 
afternoon, Tiffany and I went out. Someone in the church has a boat and uh, we went out on the boat. And it's a wake surfing boat. You know, you've seen these boats out? They're like, you know, they're very popular these days. And, and these boats are, are designed where you can, uh, you can create this wake. They're wake surfing boats, right? And there's ballasts in the back of the boat and you can fill them up with water and to weight down the back of it so that it makes a bigger wake. And then you get on this boat, you know, and you, you have a short rope and you get pulled up on this surfboard and then you pull yourself up in this wake and you get in this wake and you find you're like five feet behind the boat, you know? And then eventually you, you get in the groove of that wake and you can throw the, the rope and you just surf in this wake and you're not connected to the boat at all. I didn't get that far. That's another sermon for another day. But that's such a cool thing to think about that you get in the sweet spot and it, you just, you're just sitting there surfing. And, and the gentleman that I was with, uh, his name's Eric James. He's sitting right here. I didn't want to embarrass him, but he's incredible. Like he's just, I mean, he, you know, he's, he's not connected to the boat. And he's just, and I'm just going, you know, and today I can barely move. If you see me limping, you'll know why. Like I'm, and and we're just going along, you know, but you get in the sweet spot of that and you get your balance, whatever, and you can just allow the wake. What are you saying? I'm saying you can just enjoy the ride and ride the wave of God's goodness and mercy. But you've got to get in position. You've got to get in position. You see, if you get out of the wake, guess what's going to happen? You, you're going to fall. You're not going anywhere. You lose momentum. And many of us today, if we're real, we're honest, we've lost momentum in our life because we've stopped tuning into the voice of the Good Shepherd. We've stopped living in a personal, intimate, covenant relationship with God. Now, you, you may be saved, but you're not living in the treasure of His voice. You're not living in the goodness and the mercy of who God is. I'm here to tell you, Jesus said, when you're living with the Good Shepherd, it is life that is abundant. That's why the enemy hates you when you're living in the goodness and mercy of the Almighty God and you're following after the Good Shepherd, my friend. He hates it, so he wants to steal, kill, and destroy you. He wants to take anything good that God's trying to accomplish in your life. He wants to kill. He wants to take the breath and the life out of you of anything good. God. And then he wants to destroy any evidence of God's goodness ever happened in your life to convince you and others around you that God is not real, that he was never really your shepherd, that it's all a facade, this thing's not real, and we know all that's baloney. But when you're living in the goodness of God, and he's good all the time, it, it's not just something we should say as a spiritual cliche, it's who God is. He is good all the time and his mercy for you and I is given fresh every morning my friend that's why you need to wake up tomorrow and you need to before your feet even hit the ground you need to say God I awake today this is the day that you've made and I rejoice and I'm glad in it let your mercy wash over me today it's new every morning every morning meaning he gives you everything you need for every single day that you have breath in your lungs to experience His goodness, to walk in His love, to walk by faith and not by sight and live in His peace. Because in this world, you'll have trouble. But if you live in the wake of who I am, take heart, be reminded, I have overcome the world. Amen. Would you stand to your feet today? I'm just going to ask you to bow your head and no one moving around here just for just a moment. Maybe you're watching today through technology, wherever you're at. I, I'm going to ask you the question. Is the Lord your shepherd? Is he your shepherd today? And if he's not, you can make it personal this morning and say, 
The Lord is my shepherd. If, if you're here this morning, again, just a holy moment, or watching today online, and that's a, that's a struggle to answer that question. I, I'm not sure, Pastor Jason, if the Lord is my shepherd, but I, but I want him to be today. And you need to make the Lord your shepherd I'm just going to ask you to slip your hand up. I just want to pray with you. I want to lead you in a prayer anywhere in this place. I need to make the Lord my shepherd. Yes, sir. God bless you. I see that hand. Anywhere else? Yes, ma'am. Yep, I see those hands right over there. Anywhere else? I'm looking. Yep. God bless you. God bless you. I need to put my full trust in the Lord. Yes, sir. God bless you. I see that hand in the back. Yep. Yep. Come on, I need a shepherd. I want to make him personal today. I want to put my full trust in the nature of who he is as Jehovah Rohi. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you raise your hand just in your own personal way, I just want to invite you to surrender your heart to the Lord right here. I'm going to pray over you and I'm going to pray that your dependence on the shepherd is going to increase. I'm going to pray that uh, you're going to be able to hear his voice like you never have before. And I'm going to pray that your trust in who he is is going to increase and multiply. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, you will acknowledge him and he will, as the good shepherd, direct your path. Your path. Again, if, if there's someone here and you desire to be baptized today, the pool is open. The pool is open. Don't let the enemy talk you out of it. Let's pray together and then we'll sing for just a moment. God, we worship you today. We thank you for these. What a great time of worship and the word. We are so thankful that you tuned in with us today. If you gave your heart to Christ today for the very first time, we would love to know about it and connect with you. Please go on our website and fill out a digital connection card so that we can celebrate what God has done in your life with you. Also, if you have a prayer request or a praise report, we would love to know about it so that we can join together and pray with you. We also have multiple ways that you can give to our ministry. You can text to give, you can go on our Realm app, you can give online and help us as we make an impact locally and globally for the kingdom of God. Thank you again for watching. We can't wait to see you again next week. Have a blessed week.